So you're ready to jump into 3D printing. Welcome to one of the most satisfying hobbies you could ever get into. It's also occasionally going to make you want to throw everything straight out the window. I'm Tom Foolery from Tom Foolery Prints, and I'm about to give you my top 10 surefire hints that every beginner needs on 3D print so that you can spend less time on troubleshooting and fixing things and more time printing cool stuff like all of this. All right, tip number one, guys, start with PLA. I'm, uh, I know there's a lot of different filaments out there. I know you see a lot of people like myself and others printing with flexible materials and different things to make cool stuff like shoes or whatever's the hot topic at the minute. Start with PLA. One, you do not need an enclosure for it. So you can get one of your you know, bed slinger, easy, cheaper printers like the A1 and just throw stuff at it with PLA. Nothing fancy. It's less likely to clog your printer. You're not going to have any issues like you might with a couple of silks, although less likely these days, it can still happen. Start with PLA. Less tuning in as for ABS and other things. Don't get all the flexible materials. You don't need all the hardcore materials. Just start with PLA. I know I've repeated it several times. I'm just going to say it. Everything you can see behind me is printed on PLA. R2D2, all the droids, all the stuff, the shield, it's all PLA. It is the easiest to work with. It is not the most durable material, but for anything like this, it holds up. PLA is easy to print, it smells like waffles, and it won't warp like a toddler's move. It is the best to go with when you're starting out, guys. It's also the easiest to post process. That brings me to tip number two. Learn how to post process. I know it, I know I repeat it all the time, I talk about it a lot, but if you're printing stuff like this and you're going to be painting it, you need to learn how to post process. I have a number of videos that I'm going to link below that go through the all the steps that I use to post process all of my stuff. Uh, that's from that's from the sanding up to filler primer, the different materials I use here in Australia, different things you can get from places like Bunnings, the costs, it's all in the videos I'm posting below and you can get anything from a raw print all the way up to a fully, print, uh, fully painted and ready to go prop. All right, tip number three, guys. Be picky with your files. I know this may sound a little silly. There are a lot of files out there that you pay for. Um, a lot of places like, a lot of places like Colts 3D, they'll send you to different places and different sites. They list everything and you will be able to buy some files of places like Etsy and other places, uh, but just because you pay for it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best file. That being said, some of your free files also certainly not going to be the best. I recommend, if you, go, especially if you're using a bamboo printer, go through the Bamboo Handy app when you're starting out. This, straight off the Bamboo Handy app. The detail's awesome. The print quality is awesome. I didn't have to put in any supports or anything. Everything's already set up in the app. It's ready to go. And it just locks together. And we've got an awesome thing ready to start post-processing and painting. Other places though, guys, check out Thingiverse. Check out uh, things. If you're going to doing a whole suit of armor, like I've got Iron Man in the corner, you can't see him now, but if you want to do an entire Iron Man suit, there are a number of different files out there. Now, I've used a lot and in my videos about Iron Man and things. I tell you where I get my files. Um, you can find some free full suits like Iron Man or Halo or anything like that off places like Thingiverse, Colts 3D, Etsy. Some of the ones on Etsy are going to be a couple hundred dollars just for the files and paying that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best file you can get. But check them out. Go through all the files. Make sure the scaling's right. Make sure everything's right. Make sure the, you know, make sure that it's it's set up in a way that it is actually going to print well some of the files you see they are like paper they are not thick enough to actually print and they're not usable files um so don't get tricked out guys don't get caught out with something that's just not going to work start off with something easy and go from there that brings me to my next tip guys start small and no i don't mean start by printing things like minis for dnd although I do love this one. No, guys, I mean, again, grab something really simple off 
Bamboo Handy or off the Creality app or just off Thingiverse if you really want. There are some such simple, easy files off there that you can just throw straight on a printer and print away. Start small, start learning to post-process, start with something simple and small, maybe do a helmet and work your way up from there. I wouldn't recommend jumping straight into an entire suit like Iron Man or a clone trooper or Halo or anything like that. I know they're awesome, I know they're fun, but you've got to learn first, guys. You can't run before you can walk. All right, my next tip, guys, learn your slices. So there are a number of different slices. A lot of them are now essentially copies of each other, uh, but if you're going to be using things like the Bamboo Handy or the Maker World, the Creality apps, the Creality slices on your computer, Learn how to use them, guys. Learn things like adding in extra supports or deleting supports. You do not have to support the actual dome, the top of a helmet anymore, because bridging exists. So they're wasted space. It's more clean up. It's wasted material. It's actually more likely to fail uh, if you put certain supports in certain places. So don't always trust the auto supports. Learn the slices, learn the thicknesses, learn the speeds for your printers, learn how to set all of that up. It's going to help you in the long run, guys. I know it's not as necessary anymore. A lot of things you can throw from your phone on different apps now, great. Learn them anyway, because it is going to help you setting up. That doesn't mean you need to know how to model anything, no. But it means that you may want to slice something up to put, you know, on two different plates. So you might want to, if you have a look at bamboo, you can set them up on different plates and different colors. It's great, learn those things, guys, because it really is going to set you up in the long run for different things. It's gonna give you that knowledge that is fantastic to have. All right, guys, we're gonna get into a few tips about the bed. So the first one, clean your bed. It doesn't have to be every single time. I know a lot of people say, clean your bed every time before you print. No, no, but if you use things like glue, I don't recommend it, but if you use things like glue or if you're using different materials and things on it, do clean your bed. And that doesn't mean just scraping it off. Grab some soap, grab some warm water, give it a good wash and give it a dry down. Cleaning your bed regularly is great and it will help your prints to actually stick. And that brings me to my next tip, adhesion. There are a few things to help you with adhesion. Everyone in the past used to say, spray it with hairspray, use a glue stick. I say don't, don't use these. Um, the time of needing to use a glue stick is long gone. Although, if you believe Creality, they still send a glue stick in with most of their printers. Don't, guys. This leaves a messy print um, on the base. It means you have to clean your bed more regularly. It can actually mess up your print if you use too much of it. It doesn't help with the leveling of the bed because, you know, if you've got clumps of glue that are building up on top of each other, the head's going to be doing this. Even if you have auto leveling, it, it's going to mess up your printer, guys. It's, uh, it's going to mess up the print. You will end up with a nice thick layer of glue on the bottom of each print that you're then going to have to clean up. It's going to end up with little divots and little things. You don't want any of it. So the biggest tips that I can give for adhesion, guys, one, if you're having trouble with adhesion, and I know there was a lot of trouble with the Creality K1s. A lot of people were having these issues that led to big blowouts and big things, and it really was just an adhesion issue. Get a different bed, guys. Get a textured bed. A textured bed will help with adhesion. And a really good textured bed, more textured, you can get them, I'll show some here. You can get them for every printer, guys. Get a textured bed. The days of glass beds are out the window. But temperature does also still matter. I set mine usually to about 60 degrees. Doesn't matter if I have it in an enclosure or not. 60 degrees is what I like to stick at. That's good for me. I'm printing most of my stuff in a garage, so I do need it that little bit warmer. I know a lot of people when they're inside and they've got you know insulation and insulated space, they're going about 40 degrees, perfect. It is based on where you are, guys. I'm in the hills, I'm in a colder area, I print out in my garage, I need that 60 degrees on my bed, otherwise I am going to have adhesion issues. Now, temperature, bed. Do you put something on the bed? I said before, don't use hairspray, don't use glue, don't do that, those days are over. I do actually still use something on my bed. I use it sparingly, but I do swear by it. This is a spray by Filler Prime. This is a spray by Filler Form, guys. I use this for every print now, on every printer, on my Creality, on my Bamboos, on my Soul Bowls. I use this on everything. Now, I do use it sparingly bottle will last me 
a couple months. And that is with me printing every day across multiple printers. This stuff is fantastic. If you jump over and check out their website, they have a video where they actually printed a handle onto an old A1. They lifted the A1 up off the ground from the handle and then they clicked the bed and it came off clean as anything. There's no residue. There's barely any cleanup. It doesn't leave film or any issues on your bed. It's very light. Just spray one cover over the bed like I'm doing here and you're good to go. Now, Bamboo, Creality, others have made a similar product now. So go check those out. That's fine. These guys are in Melbourne. If you want to support local, you can also grab it from Jcart. You can grab it from their website or you can go down to the shop of the 3D print gear, uh, 3D print gear and check out the 3D print guys and grab it from them. I love this stuff. It's not expensive. I use it on everything and it really does make a difference, guys. Now, I talked about auto leveling. Now, most printers these days do have an auto bed level. But my next tip is to still learn to level your bed. Check the level of your bed and watch that first layer. This is a quick one, guys. Even if you're doing the auto leveling, do watch it. Do check what the results are. You may just have to move the printer a little bit on the thing. If you move your printer regularly as well and it moves on your table or on the space that you're printing on, do do the auto leveling every time. Every time you turn it off, auto level. I set mine on my bamboos to auto level with every single print. It does help, guys. It sets up that every part of that thing, especially with the auto leveling, it's going to go through and actually check where the what it needs to do to adjust in every single spot. I think there's 36 spots that it checks on the A1. I could be wrong there, check with me guys. But it is checking across the whole bed. That's great. Okay, that is actually going to help you. The days of having to put a little piece of paper in and move it and check all that, they're gone. Um, you can still do that on something. Solvols will still get you to actually manually do the leveling. I know the Ender 3 for a little while there was still doing it. I've got the, S the V3 SE and you don't have to. You can adjust, but it does still have an auto bed level. It's great, guys, but still level your bed. Now, I started off by saying use PLA. I'm going to say use a trusted brand of filament. Whether you're using PLA or you're not, find the brand that works for you. This doesn't have to be the same brand as your printer. I use bamboo on my Creality's. I use Creality on my bamboo. I use things, but I would stay away from the cheap $8 ones you see on eBay. They are often tangled. They are often brittle. They don't always work. I say always, King Groon can have some great sales and you can get them for under $10 for a kilo. Fantastic. At the minute, I'm using nothing but the Creality and the Filiform. So I love my Filiform. I grab it from here in Victoria. I'm grabbing a lot of Creality at the minute because it is on sale at JCAR for $14 a kilo. Gray, white, and black. They're great colors that I use. If you're doing things like uh, Hue Forges, fantastic. Great thing to learn. If you're doing cosplay, I print mostly in gray. Gray and occasionally black. As you can see here, this was just using some leftover white. I don't like using white because you have to sand it down. Like if you're sanding down your post processing, you can't see where you've sanded on white as well as you can on gray or black. That's just me being picky. It's also something I would recommend. It's not a tip, but it's a little extra one in there. Print with gray and black if you are doing cosplay because you can see where you've sanded and you've started post processing. But find the brand that works for you. I like Creality. I like Filiform. They're the ones I'm going with at the minute. A third good one is King Groon. I used to like eSun. I went through about 10 rolls in a row that just were horrible. They were going cheaper. They were not for me. Doesn't mean they won't work for you. I'm not a fan. Um, so find the one you like. Now, the last tip, guys, with all that being said, is you will still have failures. They happen. I get failures all the time. I mean, daily a lot of the time. I have a lot of things that fail on me. Prints fail for a number of different reasons. Go again, guys. Do all the things. Check it all. Don't spend hours on it. Sometimes just whip it off, put it back on, um, watch that first layer, and it'll be fine again. Maybe use a little extra spray, whatever whatever you need to do for you that you've noticed something went wrong. Just try again, guys. Biggest fails for me at the minute are I will occasionally have a little, uh, like a a layer shift might have some things where it's just coming a little bit. It's not, you know, it's not extruding properly. I'll just take the filament out, clean it, put it back in. 
takes five minutes. Little things, guys, you can learn, but you will still have failures. Learn to fix them, learn to deal with them, and you will love this hobby. Best of luck, guys. I hope you really enjoy it. If you have any questions or anything, chuck them in the comments below. I always get to all of my comments. Don't forget, guys, to subscribe and have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.